This is the most overcomplicated keyboard build I ever did, and it's not even a crazy ergonomic keyboard. This 60% keyboard has a 3D printed case with integrated plate and is fully hand-wired, with no soldering and only using uninsulated wire. This was quite a build. But if your question was, can I build a full keyboard the way I did the hand-wired hotswap solderless macro pads, then the short answer is yes, but it will take hours of hand-wiring and assembly. So here we go. I decided on building a 60% keyboard as my Corsair K95 was just too big to pull out for gaming or some hotkey based applications. And as I am just normally using an ergonomic keyboard with Colmac DH, having a separate keyboard with QWERTY makes things a lot simpler. Like other people being able to use your PC. The case was designed in about an hour in Fusion 360 and is clearly inspired by the KBD fans 5 degree. Just that this board only has 2.5 degrees of tilt. As that tilt does hurt my wrists, but that might just be me. The plate was a bit more effort and took me some iterations. Actually, I just used the plate generator for the first time until I noticed that I'm missing cutouts for the stabilizers and they weren't the right size. So then I needed to update them all over again. And very important, and I can't stress this enough, the plate can only be 1.5 millimeters thick. Otherwise, the switches might not sit as securely and you might pull them out with the keycaps. That's why I have this otherwise fully finished case here. Next time I'll most likely print the plate separately, so I don't need to reprint the entire keyboard. I also streamed the entire build process on Twitch, so if you're interested in seeing me build overcomplicated keyboards, drop me a follow there to see and get notified when I go live. I updated my 3D printed hotswap sockets to have wings on the side, to attach to the case, so you can just pull out the switches like a real hotswap socket, instead of pulling the hotswap socket out with it. Though to make things a bit easier I removed the clip functionality and switched to a very simple wire bending method, to reduce the points of possible failure in the board. As with these many switches, I might have a hard time making every switch very reliable. And I'm very happy with the Gatron Reds that I used for this build, but I can at any time switch out the switches. Then there is a small standoff for the microcontroller that will be secured with a screw. This was my favorite part about this board, as now the microcontroller sits very securely in there and can be removed without any glue or relying on an outer case that clicks it in. The case is 3D printed in four parts. These took about 14 hours to print and were then glued together with simple super glue. After some sanding and filling it with wood fill, I then spray painted it with the matching yellow for the keycap set that I ordered, which is the Akko yellow and purple set, inspired by the LA Lakers colors. I really liked the set, but it was also the only yellow set that looked quite decent and was in stock. Now comes the fun part of printing the hot swap sockets and wiring up the entire switch plate. Each switch gets its own hot swap socket, and then the row and columns get connected together. As I'm just using not insulated silver plated copper wire, I just twisted the ends together and depending on how much space there is, I also bend the diodes just from one diode to the next. All of these wires were very nice to form into shapes, but you really need to make sure that none of the wires touches another wire. This can be some effort in some spaces as it's quite tight around the microcontroller. Interestingly enough, it held up quite nice until now. I have used this board about a month and there were no shots at all. This wiring though did take about a week's worth of evenings with fine adjustments on each switch and the hot swap sockets to make sure everything is connected securely. Then I built a simple firmware with vial support for it. I just cloned the keyboard folder of the 3x2, the 3D printed macro pad, but I switched to the WSL2 installation, as this is working a lot faster, and I can recommend this to anyone trying to build QMK on Windows. Then it's just setting up new pins and a new key map for the keyboard. Most of the effort was typing out the vile JSON config in the keyboard layout editor. With the super simple 3D printed and cardboard backplate, everything is now done. Yeah, I kinda skipped the backplate part, but I have this super nice keep mat that is basically living under the keyboard forever now, so I'm not even sure if I'm using the bottom plate for it at all. 
Too bad I can't touch type on QWERTY yet. That's still something I'm working on now that I switched to Colmac DH on my ergo boards. You can find more about this in my last video. But I'm currently working on switching seamlessly between Colmac DH and QWERTY. And this works quite fine. Also, after using it for some weeks, it still types flawlessly without even having anything soldered on it or even insulated. I love also the compact form factor of this board and you can download all the files for this build in the description below. So I'm overall very happy with how this turned out. Maybe I'll try to build a 65% version of this one in the future, because I might be interested in some arrow keys. Interesting is also at any point in time I can just solder all these switches together on the backplate with the wiring I have already in place. And if I feel like it I could even cast it in resin or something similar. These are things I'm not quite sure if I try them out because it will basically destroy the repairability of the board, but also would be a nice experiment. But if you're into making custom boards, this could be a very easy way to bring your design to life without any soldering or more advanced equipment. I will definitely keep using this board. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer as much as I can. And then there's also my Discord server if you want to get updated about new videos or live streams. And some looks behind the scenes on my work in progress stuff. So much for this one and see you next time.